It's been four decades since I wrote The Doomsday Machine in the 1960s. And it was produced with 1960s technology. Now, 40 years later, it has been re remastered, remixed, cleaned up with wizard software, and provided with new special effects. So what I am going to do now is tell you the true story of how what has been called a classic original Star Trek episode came to be written and how it became to shot, be shot as in fact what it is. In 1967 I was writing Bug Jack Barron, the novel that would really make my reputation as a novelist. But I was also writing film reviews for among other places Cinema Magazine partly because I had a lot of inside information on the movie 2001. I wrote a feature piece on 2001 in which I compared it somewhat invidiously to Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek pilots which he was showing around at science fiction conventions at the time because I thought that was actually better done. And I got a courtesy call from Gene Roddenberry thanking me for what I had written and as a courtesy asking me to come in and pitch a Star Trek if I felt like it. I was in the middle of rewriting Bug Jack Barron at the time and I perfectly sincerely and without uh, forethought or, or clever Hollywood thinking said I'm busy writing a very important book right now Gene call me back in six weeks which was perfect Hollywood gamesmanship. And so Gene called me up in six weeks and asked me to come in and pitch a Star Trek. Gene said to me, uh, we're running out of money at this time in the season. Can you think of a show that we can shoot on standing sets? That is the sets for the Starship Enterprise. Uh, a long time ago I had had a notion which never really went anywhere to write a kind of science fictional take on Herman Melville's Moby Dick with what became the Doomsday Machine, the Planet Killer, as the White Whale and the character that became uh, Commodore Decker as Ahab. And so I explained this to Gene, he thought it was a good idea and he said go ahead and do it and when you're doing it uh, think of Robert Ryan as Commodore Decker because Ryan, as many other people at that time, wanted to do with Star Trek. So I wrote um, The Doomsday Machine in that manner. It was approved and then Gene asked me to design The Doomsday Machine itself even though I wasn't much of an artist because I would have a, a, a good take on it. So I spent a lot of time uh, designing the thing, drawing it as best I could, and presenting it to Gene, who said he liked it, and we had a very good relationship, and then I was invited, or at least it, allowed to go on the set for the entire shoot. I was informed before the episode started shooting that Robert Ryan hadn't been available and so the part of Decker was being played by William Wyndham, an excellent actor, but who played a different sort of part, more subtle, more psychologically soft than Ryan, who played tough sea captains and adventure heroes and stuff like that, more of the Ahab I would have thought of, which is why perhaps sometimes the, 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 the shooting seems a little strange because uh, Wyndham is putting his uh, his different sort of take, his softer sort of take on what I had conceived as uh, dialogue written for Robert Ray Ryan playing a real Ahab type character. But Wyndham was a good actor and uh, the shooting went well uh, except for one little thing and that was that William Shatner who had been hired to play Kurt, to be the star, had a contract that said 
that Leonard Nimoy, Spock, who could just upstage him by walking on camera in the makeup, could not have more lines than he did. So Shatner sat there cutting Spock lines out of his script. And there was one shot where Mark Daniels, the director, went through five blown takes of dialogue between Kirk and Spock. Uh, as a young writer, or even an old writer, or even any writer at all, not usually invited to be on the set in the first place, uh, you're not supposed to say anything. But I couldn't stand it anymore, and I pulled Mark Daniels' director over at the corner. I said, Mark, look, the problem with this shot is that Shatner took out a missing Spock line. Now, I know you can't put it back, but maybe Leonard Nimoy could just sort of grunt. And that's the way it was shot. And it did work, and perhaps when you see the episode, you'll be able to spot that. And then, when I saw the rough cut of the Doomsday Machine, uh, which I otherwise liked, instead of the complicated uh, Doomsday Machine that I had designed, there was a thing that you have seen on the old episode, if you've seen the old episode, which to me, looked like a windsock dipped in cement. So I said to Gene, what happened? Why did I waste all my effort designing this thing? This thing, well, it looks like a windsock dipped in cement. And Jane, who had been a, a, a military pilot, I think an airline pilot too, said, well, uh, it is a windsock dipped in cement. Uh, we ran out of money, and that's the best we can do. So now you will see in the new episode, in the remix, in the remastering, with much more sophisticated modern special effects, what they've done with the Doomsday Machine without changing any of the acting parts. But uh, you will also see a Doomsday Machine, which to me looks like a slightly more sophisticated windsock dipped in cement. But all that being said, I believe that Star Trek was a very good writing experience for me. I think it had a very positive effect on science fiction in this culture and uh, I was very happy to be associated with it and I still have a fond feeling for it. And if you folks out there show you any interest in it, uh, I will make another video like this telling the story of how Star Trek, which was supposed to be canceled after 13 weeks of its first season, was saved by a most clever media and letter writing campaign in the history of the world and went on to become what it is today, a franchise that won't die, a part of popular culture that will be there forever, so that any time some character in another movie looks to the sky and says, beam me up, Scotty. Everyone in the audience knows just what it means.